Next up, we are talking about validation because as we know, our users, all of them basically try to ruin our applications and input wrong data or malformed data into our forms and therefore our databases. And so we have to prevent them from doing that. So let's see what CakePHP can offer us to prevent such things. Uh, first of all, we are here inside our edit blog post form. So we have to go into our source model table blog post table, which we previously, previously also uh, discovered and added some associations. But as we've also talked about previously shortly is the whole validation part. And as we see here now, we have a default validation method present inside our table, which provides specific validation methods to our fields. So if we just go quickly through uh, this uh, validation present here, uh, here we say the name field needs to be a, of a scalar type. Uh, the length must be at maximum 255 characters. It needs to be present inside um, the form data and it doesn't, uh, it has to be, it has, it has to have a value. I will more, uh, I will talk about in more detail about these two in a minute. Um, but let's just connect these two together. Uh, the name field, if you haven't already known or noticed, is the name field, which is output inside our template and as well the name field present inside our uh, table uh, for the column. But yeah, basically this is now um, one part of the validation which gets default generated from CakePHP. And part of that is also um, yeah represented inside the default HTML validation, because as you see here, the max length is already set to 255. We have a required attribute that the, uh, that the value needs to be um, set uh, when submitting the form. And yeah, so you can yeah add another level of validation here as well, um, because the validator uh, object, which we get here from our parameter um, does have a lot of other um, validation methods present, which I only now added two here. Um, there are, of course, date specific validation methods, which enforce people to use a specific date time format. Um, if you have it like a string uh, value, but um, we will also talk in another video about date time values because usually you should have a date time picker in the front end so people don't have to um, deal with stuff like that but in the end if you're dealing with example given uh, a legacy database or legacy software um, where you build another level on top of it with cakephp you can of course set the format here and another one is uh, url with protocol so whenever you have a column which is called website, uh, the value present inside the form needs to be a valid URL with HTTP or HTTPS protocol uh, prefixed um, before submitting the form. Um, but yeah, that's basically it for the pure uh, validation present inside um, the entity. But also, as we've discussed in previous videos as well, uh, we now have associations with other tables. So inside here, we have now categories, which we can associate with blog posts. And this validation for associated data uh, needs to be present inside the rules, which are defined inside your model. So here we have a rule which is added to our application rules, which checks if the categories field has at least one um, selected value inside the field. And if not, we will yeah, 
print out the correct message that at least one category needs to be selected. Um, therefore, if we now um, remove that category, we now see, okay, please select at least one category. Um, yeah, category, of course. Um, but yeah, uh, when we add another category now, this error um, will be removed. But also, as you see here now, uh, I've also added another rule, which is the unique rule. So in this case, we require CakePHP to only save the value if uh, another, uh, if an entry doesn't exist with the same name already in the table. So therefore, because we already have a test blog post, which is also named test in our database, we can't save it because it says, yeah, we already have it present. But if we say test one, two, three, we will now save this a blog post and so our in that car in that regard data consistency uh, is present and is saved um, this of course can be used for stuff like emails or other um, unique strings in that regard which um, yeah depending on what application you're building can be quite handy that cakebhp already checks that for you um but yeah these are the just the two main layers in that regard how cake beach B does the validation so again the validation part here with uh, which is directly associated with the entity and which uh from a execution standpoint uh is being done inside the patch entity method so whenever patch entity is being called the validation method is being called and the build rules part is as said before more associated to the associated tables and to the um, data which is uh, connected inside your database and the build rules part doesn't happen inside the patch entity but instead happens whenever you are saving um your entity or when you're trying to save because as you've seen before the save uh, returns false and that's why we are not getting redirected uh, whenever the rules are failing um, but yeah these are basically the two main sections which are executed by default if you don't specify anything more specific uh, regarding the validation but in certain cases, of course, you have uh, inside your controller, maybe another method or some custom functionality, which needs to have a specific validation being done on your data and your entity. And this can be done as an additional array parameter inside your patch entity method. As you see here, we can say, okay, use the validate method named custom name. And this automatically uses, instead of the validation default method, the validation custom name method. As you see here, the C is also uppercased because of the cake between naming conventions. But with that, you have pretty much good control uh, about how you validate your data, no matter from where you're getting it, maybe from another uh, API sync or from another table or database uh, completely different in another um, database connection um, but yeah now let's go back to the two differences uh, which we talked about previously regarding the require presence and not empty string um, basically the validation here uh, the, the differences between these two, these two validations is that this only requires that the returns values from the form contain a name key in that regard from the form. So if we go into a blog post controller and see what the, this request data um, returns in that regard inside the, we are here now in the add method. So if we go to add and say test and select two categories, 
uh, we now see that this is basically just an array which contains all the data here in our in before this data is being patched into our entity um, but yeah going back to our require presence this require presence only checks that the name is actually present inside that array this is everything this does it doesn't actually check the value behind the name because the value is then checked via the not empty string method so this actually checks the value which is given inside uh, the form so this this is maybe one uh, confusion that can happen here because if you say okay we require a presence of name why do we have to specify that it is not an empty string it's maybe from a pure um, language perspective this is redundant but yeah this is the the, the two differences between those these two uh, validators and last but not least if you want to programmatically know what errors are being present inside your entity you can of course also get this data um, just via this method so here we have our blog post it is being patched and saved and either you can get the uh, errors before uh, b before it's being saved so just the uh, uh, validation errors um, but here we have no validation errors because yeah this now is only a rule error in that regard so we have to put that after the saving is being done and now if we try to resubmit we can now say see okay the name field has a unique problem or a unique error where it is already being used but yeah that's i would say the most important stuff about validation you should know from the start um, if you got any further questions please just go ahead and ask the support team or our discourse forum um, where you can get more detailed help. Uh, with that out of the way, you know what to do, and I will see you in the next one.